to the Flying Lion podcast. Uh, I think this is our seventh episode now. Holy crap, we made oh, it man. a long way. Okay, uh, we're staying consistent. That's right, man. Today is uh, 4th of July. I got Zach here with me. He's got a stellar hat, man. Tell me about that hat. Oh, yeah. It's the um, old 94, 1994 World Cup hat or logo, I should say. Um, it, it fits because, one, it's 4th of July and it occurred in the U.S., World mm-hmm. Cup in 94. And then we were, I think we were both born in 94, actually, speaking of. So kind of has a little uh, connection to me in that way. Oh, I love it, man. It's uh, good vibes for this morning. It's a little bit early. Uh, <laughs> I think you might have your coffee on you. Uh, yes, a little sir. bit different for us, but uh, we're going to go on nonetheless, talk a little bit about FC Cincinnati, maybe a little bit about the U.S. and their national team being 4th of July. I feel like we're kind of obligated to do a little bit of that <laughs> as well. But uh, this past Saturday, FC played New England. Uh, they had a 2-2 tie. Uh, Zach, what were your initial thoughts of this game? Man, it it was kind of all over the place. Um, you you kind of saw the worst of us, and you also saw some of the best of us. Um, first half, we kind of fell flat in the beginning. We um, we well, we got the goal, but as soon as we got the goal, Baji also has an own goal. So that kind of like (laughs) put us in a rut and for the full, the rest of the second half or the first half after that own goal, we just, we looked pretty flat. Um, But coming into the second half, I mean, we absolutely dominated whatever Pat Noonan gave to them in the locker room. I think it helped. Um, They came out fighting immediately. Um, I mean, I I think from what I saw in the stats, I think new England only had one shot on goal that whole second half. Oh, wow. So it, or no, wait, one shot in general, not even on goal. Wow. Um, but it was, in, in my opinion, I think we did fantastic on the second half. Um, we maintained, I, I just got a couple notes. We, uh, we, um, Gaddis with the, um, missed header. Mm. Like, oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> that shows why he's not a starting center right. back. <laughs> Right. I think if he was a little bit taller, I think he could have had that um, yeah. cleared. But man, if it'd be a different game if that wasn't the case. I mean, both both New England goals. Let's be honest; those were both kind of flukes. Yeah, really. Um, yeah. They were just mistakes, either on our end or just kind of uh, luck of the draw. But um, the uh, maintain pressure. I think we did fantastic. I think in the second half with Barre all moving up the field. Cause he was so quiet in the first half. Mm-hmm. Um, he moved up the field and I think he, he kind of, once he got into the game and got more touches, I think rest was history kind of, yeah. I, I was kind of surprised we didn't get a, a third goal there, but I, I'm okay with a, a draw. And in the, I guess they were second place, but now that they're, they drew us now they're in third. So right. take what we, what you will, but I think it was a pretty good, Decent game overall. Entertaining. Yeah, enter- entertaining for sure. Um, good points on all of that. I think your first point about like the fact that it was like so up and down at times, it just seemed like a cluster of like, I don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, we come out so strong. And I think Pat Noonan even had commented and said like first te- for 15 minutes of the game, I think he said is like the best we've played, you know, collectively as a team in a, in a long time. Um, You get that goal right away. You're on, you know, good vibes. You're at home. You have a great crowd. You're playing second best team in all of the MLS, I think, actually. Um, You know, New England only has three losses uh, and we have two. So really, they're a dangerous, dangerous team. Um, So I I thought it was good to go ahead. I think we just need to be better at keeping that, especially at home. Um, That's where the mistakes had come in, especially you know, the first one, I, I don't know what you thought about if Roman could do a little bit better. Um, yeah, I, I think I would agree with you on that. I, yeah. it, it was a rocket of a shot. I'll give him that. It, it didn't have much time to kind of think. But yeah, I think you just got to put it a little bit more to the right. Yeah. For those who didn't actually see it, uh, there was a shot from right about at the 18. Um, it was a rocket of a shot. But uh, Roman's diving, I think, to his right. 
he hits the ball into the middle of uh, the, you know, 18. There's a kind of a cluster of people as there was just a corner or a free kick. Um, so he kind of punches it in the line of where the players are running in. Baji, unfortunately, gets part of it. Dudes, let's just say it. I mean, he has a knack for finding the back of the net, whether it's <laughs> our net, their net. But uh, at least in that game, he was finding the net on both sides. He was a ball magnet. He was. He was. Um but I felt like, you know, maybe he could have done a little bit better. Does he punch it out in a way? Uh, does he try to just grab it? I mean, it's such like a reflex thing, but I hated to see that just after we were building that momentum. Um, I wanted to just briefly touch on our inner play to create that first goal uh, through the midfield. You have a ball that's played through, I think, probably, I think by Lucho, actually, that goes through Kubo's making a a run behind the back line. He does well to stay on side, runs down, plays a great ball. You can tell that him and Baji have maybe been working together and training on that a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. So that was cool to see them connect. At first, I honestly thought it was an own goal, but then you go back and you watch the replay and you see Baji just gets himself in a great position. Kubo puts it right on his foot to score. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I was so, so surprised that got underneath. Uh, was it Farrell? Yeah. I don't know how that got through him, but yeah. man, it was I, a it was great seeing that on TV for sure. I don't know how Andrew Farrell is still playing the MLS man. <laughs> it's huge, but yeah, I, I can't believe he's sticking with it with how uh yeah how old he is. But I think he's been in the league probably like ten plus years now, something crazy like that. Yikes! So um, to... yeah, if you want to look that up, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, overall, like you had mentioned though, um, we, we end up having 22 shots to their nine. Um, so we created a lot of chances, even when it's tied one-to-one after they get that equalizer, uh, you get a ball played off of a throw in Kubo kind of gets behind the line and puts one right at the keeper. You get another tested ball through the back line. Baji goes one-on-one with the keeper. So there was really, really quality chances, and I think that's where our XG kind of got lifted up there with all those chances we had. I think Kubo ends up having six shots in total, but only one on goal. So kind of interesting. You know, he's getting himself in good positions, maybe just has to do a little bit better at actually putting it in the net. He can talk to Baji about that one. Yeah, I was going to say that there were multiple times where I saw Kubo. um, Like you said, he's getting on the ball, but his finishing is not not there but i mean he came as a like a poacher he wasn't really right he's never i don't think he's really used to just dribbling up and shooting like he is but sure. i mean he's yeah. he's getting touches and i think that's what's the uh most important part i think yeah i mean even if you're not putting it in you're putting yourself in good positions he's getting good touches um it'll be interesting once we have you know aaron pupenza our new uh, designated player he should be starting here um, actually tomorrow he's eligible to start, you know, playing for the team. Um, Kubo might be a, a nice super sub coming off the bench. Um, so that'll be something to look at through this kind of stretch. He's gotten more minutes. Um, some of the other guys we'll probably touch on here a little bit later have gotten really good minutes, good opportunities, which will help our team down the line. Um, I wanted to kind of just really mention just how frustrated I got during the game in some ways, like <laughs> you mentioned, imagine. because it's like, We're creating such good chances, but not finishing them. Um, So you just get kind of like frustrated by that process. And then it's like, are we playing well? I'm not really sure because it's still tied or we were down at one point. Um, I I saw at halftime, actually, there was this stat that we had never won a game in our MLS history when we've gone down at halftime. That's a huge stat. Yeah. Never won a game. I definitely didn't. Don't think they mentioned that on the uh, broadcast. I'm trying to think. There was a really good stat that I saw, but it's it's escaping me. Something about 27 games or something. Where I, I, cr- correct me if I'm wrong. You you may not have heard this or not, but like 27 games where um, I, I think we were like winning at the half, mm. and we won. Right. I guess, or like, something like, like that. If we have a lead, you mean yeah. going into half? Yeah, we've only, I think, lost like two or three times in that stretch. Right. So, like I think I mentioned on the last podcast, if we go up early, usually that's a you know nail in the coffin type thing. We hold it down, especially at home. Um, in the past, 
I want to say maybe like 20 home games or something like that. If we get a lead like that, we don't usually lose it. I know even last year we had a couple games where we go up 3-0, they come back and tie it 3-3. I felt like that happened a lot, but um, it was good to see him fight back. You know, like you had mentioned in the second half, Pat really said something to him to change things. Um, I felt like our subs were more effective. Uh, maybe that was us playing at home because we looked the better side the whole second half. Um, but New England brought people in and I'm like, they just don't really look like they're testing us. Um, we were playing without, you know, Mourinho, without Miazga, without Vasquez. And New England's really playing with probably, arguably, their best starting lineup. Maybe missing yeah. one guy, but uh, very, very good attacking players on their team. A pretty solid midfield, too. Um, so for us to, you know, actually really go at them and actually be on the dominant foot, you have to be pleased about that um, and hopefully getting some of our guys back. Yeah, I was going to say, you make a good point. I think the reason we're at the top is our depth is just – Mm -hmm. actually a lot better than what I was imagining we would yeah. be at this point in this season. Um, yeah. I mean, last year, I it was pretty bad. I'm going to be honest. Our depth was not there. <laughs> I mean, all our, all our depth players were starters last year. So, it, I mean, I guess that tells you enough. But, yeah, yeah like, like you said, I mean, with the Nashville game coming up soon, I think that's going to be a real true test. But um, yeah. seeing New England with – not much depth. And I, I think we can really carry this team quite a long ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, that's been kind of our unspoken thing this year. I know in past podcasts, we talked about how, you know, like Pinto coming in has had most appearances as a sub in the MLS or close to the top there. Um, so guys have actually, you know, probably gotten more minutes as starters now that some of our actual starters have been out. Um, so maybe those stats are a little bit down, but Hey, they're getting quality minutes. Um, in the second half, the one thing I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit too, um, I felt like Lucha started to force things a little bit. I don't know if you felt that way or not. Um, you know, he was letting the game kind of come to him, you know, the first, let's say 75 minutes of the game. He had that really good ball to Kubo that created that goal. The second one he placed through to Baji, you know, really good. We go 2-2 two, two and we're really pushing. We're trying to create something. Um, and I just felt like he would dribble into the opponent sometimes. He was just trying to really, really make it happen, which I, you know, I got to get him credit for because in the past, like he's really made it happen. But um, at some points it's like, all right, you have an open guy. Let's, let's pass it on. Let's keep going. He had 14 take-ons in the game. So meaning like one-on-one -on -one with a uh, defender, only five successful though. So that was kind of low. Uh, compared to the amount that he had. And I feel like a lot of those chances came at the end of the game. That's a really good point. I know I noticed that, that stood out to me. I was going to say that Lucho, he, he didn't seem like he had the best game. Like mm -hmm. it, it's like those, like the, um, the old DC fans used to say, like he has his very hit or miss games. Right. I think this right. was a, a big miss for him. Um, I mean, yeah, he got that, that great um, play with, Kubo at the beginning of the game but yeah I think you said like you said sometimes he just tries too hard to force himself and he just needs to just lay it off sometimes I mean that's the easiest option and he makes things too complicated sometimes yeah. and it's like there's Barrial right there just just, <laughs> right. just pass it to him see that's the thing and I was going to ask you do you think that's a trust thing like you know he's playing more with Baji and Kubo up top where he's you know, been used to Brenner and Vasquez in the past. Um, do you think that's a trying to figure out where guys are going to be, you know, where, where I should play the ball? Are they going to be expecting that? I could tell with Santos when Santos came in, they were on the complete opposite pages. Yeah, that's actually a good point, especially with Kubo. Um, you know, I, I think a little bit, I think it probably has to do with that. And maybe just, I think there's a lot of pressure. I think, I mean, sure. he's the, he's the captain. He's the one who's got to get the, the game flow. I think he controls the right. game flow. And if, if the flow's off, then um, we're off basically, in my opinion. He's the heartbeat. I mean, yeah, exactly. And I think in his mind, he probably was thinking he needed to do more to kind of get into the attack, like the final third. 
Right. And he just wasn't getting there on his own. So like you said, I think he just needs to lay it off sometimes. I mean, yeah. I felt like um, Obi was fairly quiet this game as far as the attack, like going forward. True. Um, I didn't see much play between them two at all. So um, yeah, basically you hit it I on think, the head. Um, I had seen, you know, you, you talked about Obi going forward. Um, the most progressions on our team in that last game was actually through Lucho where normally you have Obi kind of leading the charge uh, and getting the team forward. I wonder if that's a, a point of we were dropped back a little bit more and we're playing a little bit more defensive to kind of counteract what, you know, New England was doing. Um, we start at a, you know, I guess position on the field closer to our goal. So when we try to get people, you know, ahead of the ball, we don't really have the numbers going forward. Like if we're dominating possession and then Obi's kind of leading the charge and we have guys up in front of him. Um, I felt like there's a lot of times where the ball would like deflect off our defender. You'd see Lucho leading the charge and then he's only got two guys ahead of him. That's a really good point. I noticed multiple times where we lost the ball in the, um, I guess on new England side and there was like no defenders. It seemed like, right. It seemed like we're, we're, we were trying to play defensive, but like, also play very yeah play very offensive but it just like wasn't yeah. working out yeah and i think in the second half you're tra- you were seeing lucha trying to move forward more as opposed mm-hmm. to um receiving the ball from the defenders um in yeah. our side of the field basically yeah i think he um is used to like as you mentioned on that point um Mourinho maybe like leading that part of things a little bit more that we're maybe missing from Manguo. Yeah, um, I felt like he had a decent game. I don't know what you thought of Marco Angulo, but I feel like he played pretty decent. Yeah, I mean he he was the one who got that whole thing moving on the Kubo or the first Baji goal. Um, yeah. he got it. I think he pulled either pulled it from a defender or he yeah Forced got a loose ball or some mm-hmm. yeah, and he tossed it to Lucho and that started that. But yeah, I mean, I don't think number eights get very much credit. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're such a kind of sleeper on the field like they're sure. they're kind of like that assassin like that silent yeah. killer kind of thing but I, I just wish i could see more shots from him i want to yeah. see what he has like he i don't think he's moving up forward enough yeah. um taking he's, shots outside of the box like we don't right. have anybody who can do that really maybe Barreal, but like that'd be awesome to start seeing some you're shots exactly from right man i i think like a dynamic midfielder like that would absolutely kill it on our team and I think that's what he was brought in, but he's a little bit nervous right now to get out of position. And then he's tracking back. He's trying to be a little bit more disciplined and not playing as free, um, which shoot, I mean, you're playing with, you know, Woboda who covers all this ground. I mean, th- you, you should have some freedom, but when new England's got, you know, as good of a attack as they do and a counter attack opportunity, I think he was trying to maybe be a little bit more conservative about that, but Mm -hmm. that's really something to look forward to. I like that shout. Let's see in the next several games, if Angulo gets forward a little bit more and if that creates more opportunities for us. Yeah. And I think with the coming games, I mean, we've got Charlotte next or this Saturday. I mean, they're, they've got like one of the most conceded goals. So it'd be awesome to see kind of Mm -hmm. like see him move up more in the offensive. So yeah. Good shout. Good shout. I wanted to uh, ask you uh, a question here. We're going to do our, our trivia question of the week. Oh, boy. So uh, Dominique Baji had a brace, or uh, as soccer terms it, two goals, questionably three if you want to count those. <laughs> uh, but uh, this was the first time in his FC Cincinnati history in his two years with the club. How many multi-goal games has he had in his career? So shout out or bonus points if you can name the teams that he was playing on. So I noticed you said teams, so it's got to be more than one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh-huh. Um, oh, man. I'm trying to remember what teams he was even on. He got tossed around quite a bit, didn't he? A couple of different ones. Um, I feel like Colorado Rapids, I think, was one, Maybe. Um, what do Colorado Rapids and 
when did he i'm trying to remember when he even started playing because i don't want to go too far back to yeah i'll give you i'll give you a hint on it at least uh mls his debut was in 2016 oh, okay um so he's been in the league for a decent amount of time i don't know what teams he's been on so i would say colorado okay. rapids in seattle okay and how many i guess multi-goal games do you think he's had that was i think uh Oh, the, the oh, yep. Um, let's do. I think he had three. Okay, so locking it in three multi goal games in his career. All right, so stay tuned at the end of the episode. We'll give you guys the answer for that one. Um, I wanted to kind of segue just real quick on uh, one thing I took away from. Um, obviously, I went to the DC game last week, uh, oh, this yeah. one this week. Um, we gave up five goals in the past two games. So uh, defense has got to figure it out a little bit. That's a really interesting. I didn't notice that, but yeah, that's not great. And I mean, I think it kind of shows with maybe Gaddis not being able to cover as much ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we've always at least one game, we've had one starter in the mid or uh, as a center back, right? In the center back. Yeah. Like Hagelin last game, Mascara this time and Hagelin, I guess too. But I mean, it could be that, um, well, like like you like we said, the New England kind of goals were a, a bit of a fluke, right? Right. But last game with Haglin, they were all kind of like, um, maybe not our first choices for defenders. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you, got, you had Haglin. <laughs> Was it did Powell start in DC? I can't Powell remember. Powell started DC, right center back, and then Murphy was on, uh, I think, left center back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we've uh, given up twenty-one total goals this year, but you get you know, five in the last two games. Um, is that good shout on the fact that like maybe new England's goals weren't like well worked, but still is like some sort of communication type, just errors, errors that we weren't making earlier in the year. Um, my personal opinion, and I'm biased just cause I've always thought this guy was needed for our team, but, uh, Matt Miazga is really the glue. Um, you know, he would keep people accountable and, Maybe the first mistake happens, but he yells at somebody and is like, you need to step out on that guy. And then on the second one, you know, somebody steps on the ball. So the cross doesn't even come over. And so Gaddis doesn't even have to whiff on the header. Um, so yeah. I, I think there's like a, a leadership thing that's missing a little bit in the back right now. Obviously, you know, Haglin, Gaddis, they've had, you know, oodles of experience in the MLS. But, you know, you put Mascara and Miazga back there and those are solid solid anchors good shout that's a good point yeah so um i wanted to ask you i guess on a little bit of the negatives we're going to switch it up today we're going to do uh our our cards of the week first so i'm going to ask you what your card of the week was yeah so right before the game actually i think it was that day of that morning or something um twitter announced that they were limiting their posts oh, to like I think post read to like 600, but then they kept changing it for unverified users. I mean, obviously we're unverified, so yeah. take yeah. what you will. It, it's, it kind of hurts the the podcasting scene, the, the news journalists. It kind of hurts all of those, those groups. Um, now, you know, Pat Laurel, they're all like trying to do this um, right. game um, commentating as it, things happen. And, people are not going to look at them because you're hitting your limit as you're scrolling. So it's like people who can't watch the game, they can't get the updates that they're wanting. So I, yeah. I think that was a, obviously that's kind of out of everybody's control because, because Twitter and all, but <laughs> that, that was such a buzzkill, I think to the, um, the weekend because we couldn't, couldn't post or well, we could post, but nobody's going to see it kind of thing. So yeah. Well, it makes was... you realize how accessible like media is on that platform, uh, especially like real time, you know, being yeah. able to get either people's opinions on what's going on or, you know, just play by play, you know, different things. And yeah, you're not really getting that now. Or if you've reached your limit, like you said, like people, I think are creating like burner accounts and stuff like that, just to be able to, you know, be able to see information. Well, yeah. And like, it's great seeing like, the um, highlight goals from the like FC account, right? Like the replays and like seeing like every angle and whatnot. And you can't see it when you kind of hit your limit. So I think uh, to your point, it, it, 
it's not very accessible at yeah. the moment. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a red card. That counts as a red <laughs> card. Hopefully we see a change in that. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to do my, my card of the week as uh, the U S men's national team for taking away, you know, arguably two of our best players during this stretch of the year. Um, kind of unfair for teams that are doing well and have good players to get their best players taken away from them. And now you have to adjust, which is part of the game. It's like if you had an injury, but some of these things could be avoidable if we, you know, let's say move the gold cup into leagues cup time in July. Um, you know, Vasquez scores, um, the other day against Trinidad and Tobago. So shout out to him. He had a good, I think it was like maybe 15 minutes for the team, but scores a goal only adds to his confidence. Um, Miazga comes in in the second half, plays about 45 minutes. Um, but I'm just getting a little bit frustrated by the fact that they're at least in the last game, both not starting. Yep. It's like, come on guys. Like if, if these guys are going to be out, like at least play them. Right. Especially with a team like Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, it was, yeah. it was kind of a given. I mean, it was, was that the last game of this break? I can't, I, I haven't been following too, yep. too close, but yep. it was the last one. It, it's like, can they just leave early, please? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like I want them prepared for our games and it's right. like, I'm being a little selfish, but yeah, I think like you said, every other league has a two week break and it's yeah. like every team would so love to have a break. Cause they're everybody, this congestion of this um, schedule, yeah. you know, it's it almost, is what it uh, is. Yeah, it really is. And I almost feel like I'm being like un American on 4th of July and saying like I'm blaming the US <laughs> national team, but we just had Nations League and like that I think is our A team. Like that is our team that we're going to play. You have Gold Cup. And if people aren't familiar, the Gold Cup, you know, historically has been more, uh, you know, MLS players. Sometimes some of our best players do play in the MLS. So they get taken away from their teams too. But um, at least this year, you know, this is kind of, I would say, the B team. There's some crossover with some guys like Jesus Ferreira who plays, you know, with um, the main team as well. But how many different teams are we going to have and like the necessity for it? Like at this point, yeah, they're getting like international, you know, experience and stuff like that. But like, let's find another time to do it. <laughs> That's a Yeah, that good shout. They're all in, in exhibition games and stuff like that where they're not. Yeah as important like right. put the a team in let the a team play let them gel together so yeah. that they can actually right now go far but yeah what go ahead i was just gonna say i i'm not gonna lie i mean i am excited to see them so now that we've won our group you know zach and i are going to the u.s game um next sunday um the opponent is still to be announced depending on who wins today uh it would be kind of cool to see canada win so um, at TQL, we're hosting the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup um, uh, again on Sunday, a doubleheader. So that'll be kind of cool to see. Um, finally, the guys are back home, but just for the wrong team right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. Hoping for the best for them. Always, you know, uh, on 4th of July, especially we're American. We're supporting our national team. Just feel like we could find a better time for some of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and 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 please get rid of those kits yeah yeah well did you want to uh touch any more real quickly on the uh new england game before we take a quick break here um no i think we're good i think that's i think we covered most of it yeah awesome well, we're going to have a word from our sponsor here, and then we'll be back with you guys here in a second. So Agility is a technology-driven soccer training facility. So we offer six facets of training. Uh, that would be Tech Touch uh, with ball launchers that work on your first touch, the TSZ, uh, which is the ESA equipment and working on decision-making. We also have a circuit. Uh, circuit training would be taking the ESA equipment to the next level. It's kind of like a soccer obstacle course. Then we offer neuroscience training with our reflection tools, uh, working on processing things a little bit faster and eye coordination and such. Uh, we offer skills classes, which is your typical core verge skills training. Um, lots of people still enjoy that. So we work on a lot of attacking 1v1 skills. 
And then we also offer athlete development. So our athletes come here and they work on speed, agility, uh, quickness, explosive movements, really just learning how to move and function a little bit better as an athlete. And we're back. Thanks for uh, listening to our sponsor there. Uh, again, today is 4th of July. We're talking all things uh, FC Cincinnati, our 2-2 uh, tie last week to New England. We had kind of recapped a little bit. We'll uh, maybe touch just briefly on the last part of that here in a second. But uh, with it being 4th of July, I had a, a question to ask Zach here. So what is your favorite food to eat on 4th of July? <laughs> You know, call me a savage. Um, you know the uh, Jello with the whipped cream on top and the pretzels Ooh. inside. Yeah, or like the pretzels as the like base. That yeah. stuff. It's nasty, but <laughs> I'll eat that stuff all day. I'll see if we can have one of those available for you <laughs> later today. Oh goodness. <laughs> Mine's probably gonna be like grilled um, corn on the cob. I think that's oh. like an underrated like thing. Man, I hope. Can't say I've had that for Fourth of July, but that's a good shout because not nobody really eats vegetables on Fourth of July. It's right, all right. all heavy meat and sausage and of, burgers. Uh, exactly, sausage, burgers, like all that stuff. But um, we'll have all that available later. <laughs> Heck yeah! <laughs> Got to try it the Ryan way. That's right. That's right. So I wanted to ask you. We did our card of the week. I wanted to ask you what your jersey swap of the week was. Who did you think uh, played well? Um, and wanted to give a shout out to. Yeah. So while he wasn't like we, we kind of discussed a little bit, his finishing was off, but Kubo, um, I think overall he had a pretty great game. He's okay. really filling in that role for striker um, because the um, obviously uh, Vasquez out for international duty and Santos. I'm, I'm and I'm kind of surprised Santos didn't start, but it, mm -hmm. he could kind of still have a knock. Um, but yeah, I, I think Kubo really stepped up. He got the first assist, um, and he really kind of uh, – he had a lot of shots, but they weren't quality shots, but they were still shots nonetheless. Yeah. He's getting on the ball. He's he's doing his job, basically. Um, Good to see him back after being sick, too, last week. Yeah, I and I totally missed that, too. I, I looked back, and I noticed, like, <laughs> Wait, where's Kubo in the lineup? Like, I didn't know he even – he didn't even travel with uh, yeah. DC, but – yeah, I think um, overall, I, he played his role. Mm -hmm. I think he did his job. He did great at it as well. So, I think Pat uh, Noonan says, like, do your job. Like, before every player that he's putting in to, like, a different position maybe or something, he's like, just fit in. Like, just do your job. <laughs> well, it, it's even funnier because, I mean, Kubo doesn't know much English, so it's, like, <laughs> straight into the point is probably the easiest <laughs> way for him. Right. Yeah. And the dudes played at like so many different positions. Like I think I touched on it last episode. Mm -hmm. Like, do we do we slide Kubo back in to, you know, center back at some point? Or like you know, what do, what do we do? <laughs> He's um, very versatile. I mean, yeah. I, I think it, it also kind of goes into the like Japanese way. It's like you work your heart off on anything you do and um he really puts all his um energy and he yeah, plays his heart out. It's yeah. great to see. Yeah, especially in a team where we play sometimes like such a high press. Oh, um, absolutely. You could tell he did much, much better at doing that than Kimi did last game. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Kimi is a little slow on the press. Kubo, his energy is just there. I mean, you, you yeah. saw from his um, goal right. celebration with Baji, like dude was just electric. Yeah, yeah, I'm... Very excited to see him playing more minutes. I think he's a fan favorite as well. So I know a lot of people are pretty happy about that. Um, I wanted to shout out for my Jersey swap of the week, uh, Dominic Baji. Uh, easy Both one. Given. Yeah. Yeah. You know, low hanging. Got a hat fruit, trick. But uh, yeah, got, got, a, got a hat trick, right? <laughs> yeah. Keep finding the back of the net. Um, he's had a pretty solid month, actually, you know, filling in and being uh, mainly our our go-to striker um, ever since the Columbus game, I feel like he's played pretty well. There's been some games where he's been a little bit more absent, but um, playing at home, you know, really finding his stride. 
um, getting goals in different ways, you know, having the ball crossed into him and scoring, having a ball more centrally, you know, taking a touch that sets him up well. Um, and then, you know, even deflecting one in. So it happens, but uh, <laughs> we joke, but I think he had a, a great game. I think uh, it'll be interesting to see, like you mentioned, Zach, um, I was a little bit surprised that Santos didn't start or at least get more minutes. So maybe that's something to look at if, he's really fit and ready to go for longer if we, you know, do need him. Um, but uh, we have Aaron Bupenza coming in. So I, exciting player to, to add to the mix. And, and I was just going to point out that not, not always do we have a Jersey swap of the week where we have two strikers, like mm-hmm, true. They, our strikers did really well this, this past game. And I yeah. think it says a lot. And the fact that we have depth up there and, they're still able to um, perform, yeah, get goals. Um, but let's let's see how Bupenza comes in because I'm <laughs> I'm so excited to see how he, um, yeah, how he plays. I'm excited. I heard you know he's a really nice guy. He seems pretty bought in about things as well. Um, equating to a new country, you know, especially in the MLS, is always difficult um, historically for those who don't really know um, when a lot of these guys come in from overseas or from other leagues, there's usually a little bit of a adjustment period. Um, It usually takes them several games to kind of hit their stride. Uh, Obviously there's going to be exceptions to that um, where Obi came in and just destroyed everyone. Um, But uh, you know, his experience in playing in a lot of the big leagues, I think sets him up. Well, Um, he had played in the Turkish league in the past. I know we had touched about, him a little bit in previous podcasts but now that it's real now that it's happening you know technically even tomorrow he could be available for charlotte i'm very excited yeah i I was gonna say you say it reminded me that obi also came from the turkish league Mm -hmm. and i i I really want to go back and see like how those two fared if they ever played each other true true that would have been kind of an interesting watch to to go back and look at but yeah i mean (laughs) i think bupenza it's kind of like the Angulo situation. I, I hope he is. Is it going to be an Angulo or is it going to be an Obi? Like, right. is he going to come in and maybe take yeah. a few games, like you said, or can he just come in, just goals blazing, and just start firing away? Um, it'd be nice to see the uh, the latter, but hey, you never yeah. know what you're going to get in MLS. Your your comment about um, you want to go back and see if they played each other really was getting at me because. I would imagine everyone who plays Obi is like scared to death. Of <laughs> they like have nightmares. <laughs> so, Benz is like, shoot, I got to join his team. <laughs> He's like, I do not want to play against this guy again. That is funny. I yeah. feel, I mean, like Obi, we talked about it before. The dude just is going into so many tackles and just doesn't really even care. You know, I think was it last game, DC game, like, there was another one, him and Benteke go up against each other and he gets elbowed in the face again. So, I mean, he really lays his body on the line. Well, and, and it's really interesting. I can't find a time because he's he does hard tackling, like yeah, the hardest I've seen probably mm-hmm. in MLS. And none of the uh, like the players he's tackling, like they never get in fights with him, probably because they like don't <laughs> mess with him. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're right. That's a good point. Uh, it's like yeah, dude none is of them like really fearsome. like come up and chirp like where i feel like if lucha goes into a tackle lucha's like you know like no 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 or otherwise he's like <laughs> right up in their face about it but yeah obi just kind of gets up and i think his like reputation is just like preceding himself like it's like yeah you know exactly what's about to happen out here it, it's kind of <laughs> you're gonna laugh it's kind of going back to when yap stom played it for um <laughs> Man was it you? Man U night? Yeah, like everybody <laughs> just despised the dude. Imagine just... Obi playing under Yapstam. Like that <laughs> would have been the ultimate. Like you have the green light to go and like kick somebody. Like yeah, yeah. That's that's hilarious. I love that. Um, this kind of helps to segue us here a little bit. Um, our next game, like Zach had mentioned earlier, is uh, going to be against Charlotte away on the road. Um, the one thing i was going to say it later on but since you're talking about obi now uh he's on a yellow card watch right now he got he picked up another yellow um this past match i think he's up to either seven or eight now he's one away from another one game suspension 
yeah, I was going to say it's seven. So I'm not familiar with all the suspensions and whatnot. So once you get to that eighth card for the game, like, is it like, then you go like 10, is it 10 yellows or like, how does that work? Like what's the, that's a great question. We'll have to look that up specifically. My at least belief originally was you get five, you sit out a game. Um, And then, you know, if you have five games or four or five games in a row without a card, you get one dropped. Mm. So he's already served a one game suspension. He's kind of accumulated more again. Um, maybe he had one drop at some point because he had a fair play time. Um, but, you know, he's one away again. And I'm not exactly sure on that. Maybe they lessen the interval once you have more yellows. <laughs> to, <laughs> right. to stay like, you know, like, let's stop having all these yellows, man. Um, but I, I don't know. His challenge that, I guess, cost him the yellow this past game was fairly weak, in my opinion. Um, the guy, yeah. the left back was like rolling around on the ground. And then every time that dude got on the ball again, the whole TQL stadium was booing this guy. Yeah. I, re- I remember that. That was actually really funny because Taylor Twelman, believe it or not, thought it was a pretty soft foul as well. Oh, it was oh, really? a foul, but it was a soft yellow. Okay. Yeah. I, I think even he was like surprised by it. Yeah. Um, shocker right but yeah no that's that's great that uh, you could hear everybody from the broadcast um booing and whatnot i think it was spalding um, yeah it, yeah, was, it we, was pretty funny we've turned it into a tradition since uh you know i, I feel like the uh toronto game is mm-hmm. is actually what it was bernadeski has created this thing where one player on the other team everyone in the stands is like yeah let's all boo this guy like let's all just come <laughs> together and every time he touches the ball we're gonna just boo the crap out of him i love it it's it's great chirping and it kind of builds that fortress like you've mentioned in the past like yeah. a, a tough place to play in right yeah it only adds to that um we had uh like i mentioned earlier a solid solid crowd um Luckily, I made it down there with all the crowd and Taylor Swift and everything. <laughs> um, you, you'll have to touch on that at the final closing questions. Oh, but man. I think I think we need to stay on track with the yeah. Charlotte game. <laughs> yeah, We're good, getting pulled off. Yeah, good shout. Anyway, um, the Charlotte game on Saturday, um, they are tenth in the East. Um, their home record is actually three, four, and three. I feel like the record should be better. They have honestly like great attendance, like. Seems like the atmosphere usually is pretty good in Charlotte. Um, we haven't had great historical uh, record against Charlotte overall. Um, the biggest thing I kind of wanted to point on was actually the fact that we're playing on turf, I believe. Um, now, this is very interesting. Um, follow me on this one here. The U.S. played on Sunday against Trinidad and Tobago in Charlotte. They put grass on top of their turf. For the game, for the U.S. game. Okay, it's funny you say that because I was checking Foot Mob and it said grass on the stadium, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Are they? Is it? So is it turf or is it grass?" So who knows? It'll be a grab bag. I feel like this is like a competitive advantage here. Like, are we going to play on turf? Are we going to play on grass? Yeah, I, I, I have a heart. I have a bad feeling that they're going to remove that because, like that, I think you. Like you say, that's a competitive advantage for Charlotte. Yeah, but it's something to look at. I mean, this is, I don't think it's getting a lot of like publication and maybe we can shout it out more on Twitter. But I mean, U.S. just played on grass there this past week. They normally have a turf field. We're garbage on turf. Like since our last win in 2019 um, on turf, we're 0-8-3 and on turf surfaces. Mm. I was going to, I was going to say, because it, all things considered, turf against Charlotte. I mean, Charlotte doesn't have the greatest home record, right. but we also don't have the greatest away record. Yeah, and I, I think, to your point, I think it could be a toss-up uh, to that matter. But uh, really, Charlotte has not been um, performing as far as like like their big names, like Swiderski. I mean, he was doing well mm-hmm. in the beginning of the season, but I feel like he's kind of fallen off, or at least. It's what it feels like. I haven't heard much um, yeah, from the press and whatnot, but um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Um, just with uh, their players, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I They have a lot of 
Polish international players, to be honest. Like they they have yeah. like a few guys from that national team. They have a lot of internationals in general. Um, I feel like their attack is good. Their defense, like you said, they give up. I think you had mentioned it earlier in the podcast. I didn't realize the most amount of goals. Um, is it in the Eastern Conference or just in the MLS in general? That was just the. Uh, they have the worst away record in the East. I didn't. I didn't okay. see what. Um, what it was versus the West. Gotcha. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Um, they always seem to like do well at home normally, but in their last five games, they have uh, three draws more recently and then two losses prior to that. Um, and at home, you know, haven't really been able to pull it together, but who knows, man, this league is just so variable sometimes. Um, yeah. And it, interesting. it, because they're like right on the precipice of playoffs, but I don't know if that means much with having sure. is it nine teams out of the 15 who can play in the playoffs. So yeah, it's when you get to that middle section, it's kind of like up in the air on it. it could Like you, like you and Sam always say, it could be a trap game. Um, yeah. It just judging from like their, their form and they haven't won a game in the past five matches. So I, I think there's, there's room for us to get a lot of goals. Um, sure. I think, I yeah. think um, if Baji continues his form, I think we'll be, we'll be in business. I think. Yeah. Good shout. Um, especially for, you know, those guys going on the road, um, probably playing in, it'll probably be a hot, hot game too. And if it is on turf, even hotter. Um, so fitness levels is what I wanted to kind of shout out. Um, you know, we talk about New York City is a smaller um, field generally. Charlotte, I think, is actually a little bit wider than some of the other fields um, from mm -hmm. what I've heard. So, you know, Barial, RES, if they're starting, they're going to be running up and back. They're going to get tested. Um, if you remember, Zach, last year, uh, Barrial's first game as uh, left wing back was against Charlotte at Charlotte. Hmm. Forgettable and, game for him. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> I think it was a two zero loss to us. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a whole different team though this year. I think right. Um, there's gonna be a lot of space to be played, and I think if we can play into space, like Baji could body people. Um, if Santos comes in, that's perfect for his play style. Yeah, he can beat anybody imaginable. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of through balls this game, if that's the case. Yeah. Um, it, it, and to the point of legs and freshness, um, of bodies, I, I just noticed Charlotte also has a game tomorrow, uh, oh, really? a midweek game against New York. So oh, wow. while it's a small match or a small pitch, I, I think it just sucks playing against New York city. So they could be coming off another loss. <laughs> um, midweek so i think that might be beneficial to us as well yeah i mean look how we played against dc when we had a midweek game and then had to play them when they had the week off yeah um, so yeah that's a that's a really good point i didn't realize that they had a midweek game um you know speaking on midweek games obviously we play charlotte but then we go and we play at new york red bulls um so how does pat kind of balance uh some of that fatigue uh traveling on the road you know, having some guys that are questionably there for yellow card accumulation and suspension. Um, tell me what you're looking for, at least uh, in this next game from the back line. You know, I I don't know if it'll be as much as the back line as it is the that midfield. Like you said, yeah. the yellow card accumulation. I don't know what our defenders are sitting at, um, but I, it's Obi really, like you said previously. Um I honestly think they might, he might sit Obi um, okay. this game just because I think that there will be time to get some uh, minutes from our younger people, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, although we don't, I don't think we really have. I, th I think what, what might happen is maybe bring Kubo back to midfield and have Santos play up sure. um, and then have Kimmy come in for either Baji or Santos mm -hmm. and kind of give Obi some minutes just so he so he doesn't accumulate his yellows <laughs> I, I mean it's gonna be bound to happen but I'd rather have it happen against the Red Bulls as opposed to Charlotte uh -huh. yeah 
you know, so he wouldn't sure. miss that Red Bulls game because nobody likes playing Red Bulls at Red Bulls Arena. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's kind of my my thought on it more so. Yeah, no, I like that. I was just thinking more from a defensive side because of depth more than anything. Yeah. Um, and how we've kind of rotated so many people. We had such a solid kind of formula for winning earlier on in the season with who was playing, who was starting. You get into a little bit more variability, guys playing in different positions. Um, I really look to see now, do guys um, get more comfortable being in these positions now that we've played a couple games that way? Um, Hagwin obviously will probably be there. Mascara, I think, is going to be the anchor. And then I, I think they do bring uh, Murphy back in at left center back now that he's off of his red card suspension. Yeah, I was going to say the um, with Sunday, I mean, with the uh, it's the last game of the international break. So mm -hmm. I, I think we'll see all our starters back on the Wednesday Red Bull game. So I think that's not going to be as big of a problem, right? They So we play the quarterfinal on um, oh, that Sunday. So then I think they'll go on, if they win, if, hopefully they win, they'll go on to semifinal and then final. So we might not see them back until League's Cup. That's a very good point. Um, so scratch that. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I <laughs> I wasn't thinking that far ahead. Um yeah, I, I think you really have to I, I'm interested to see like if there was heavy rotation from other teams at the beginning of the season just to kind of like give a minute. Sure. And then now like we we had our set kind of um squad at the beginning and we just stuck with it and now we're hitting that spot where we're like shoot we need to start rotating people right where other teams were probably rotating way back at the beginning of the season right um getting minutes and whatnot so i'm, I'm really curious to see if there's like you said i mean haglin murphy who else is going to be back um you got um, gaddis and powell yeah, I, I think that they'll be available. I don't think that those two guys probably start, though, personally. Yeah. Unless he sees, like, hey, maybe I play one of them and then bring one of the other guys back for the next game. I don't know. And it's, I think it's going to be a toss-up on that back line. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like any one of those people will be able to start, hopefully uh, yeah. perform as well. <laughs> I don't know why in my mind, like every time I think that a guy's out for suspension, that means like they can't practice, but I'm sure these guys are like continuing to like play. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I'm, I'm sure they just, yeah, it's just like, don't travel with the team kind of thing, but right. they'll still play with them. Yeah. Yeah. So should be interesting. Um, real quickly. Uh, I wanted to give you our trivia answer. I know you're kind of excited, hopefully, to hear this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very curious because I, I this one I did not have any clue on. Sure. So trivia question of the week was Dom Baji's brace, so two goals, um, was his first for FC Cincinnati in his two years with the club. Uh, how many multi-goal games has he had in his career? Zach, you locked in three. Yeah, three. I said three. with Col Colorado Rapids and Seattle. Okay. So I'm going to tell you that you're kind of partially right here. Um, he had three multi-goal games in the MLS now. And one actually came in the USL. Oh, I didn't know he played in the USL. Kind of interesting. So this is where it gets even more interesting. Another layer to this. His first brace um, was with Colorado. So you nailed that. Um, he had two goals in, um, I think, October of 2016. Um, he then had, I think, a hat trick, actually, uh, for Dallas. Oh, that so must one. have been a small short spurt. <laughs> Dallas, and I think it was 2019, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then with us, you know, obviously, he just got the two goals. Now, the interesting part about this is I was looking back, and he actually played for Charlotte's USL team. Oh, man, that is... And 2015 he had two goals the only goals he's ever scored in the usl he had a brace in one of the games so he's had four total multi-goal games in his career three in the mls one in the usl but i didn't realize that he had played for charlotte at one point yeah no that's really surprising i i knew he was hop being passed around quite a bit but yeah i didn't realize he started there 
That's, yeah. that's pretty cool. So um, to your point, you know, let's keep his goal scoring going. He's in a place that maybe he's familiar with, with playing there before. Yeah, that's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm glad to see um, our depth pieces uh, perform and show, um, show the league that we will, we're still going to play a tough game against you, even though we're, yeah, we don't have our starters. Yep. That being said, uh, give me your prediction for the game. Yeah, I think uh, against Charlotte, I think we're going to go a uh, 3-1 win. Okay, 3-1. Um, I was actually going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think uh, a 3-1 win would be solid. I would really love to see another shutout. Um, one thing that maybe we didn't really touch on a little bit is I, I feel like Roman's kind of had two kind of down games, if you want to call them down games. Um, so to kind of build his confidence back up, getting another clean sheet would be helpful. Yeah, good shout. So um, any last uh, points here before we shut it down for the week and let everyone uh, enjoy 4th of July, everyone meaning me and you? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm i excited to shoot some fireworks off with you, see, see how that goes, and I hope everyone has a safe 4th uh, of July. Awesome. Well, everyone have a great 4th of July um, and uh, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully with another win. So have a good one. Whoa.